You want to go higher? Roger, we're moving. Look at that. There's some hills I did in Colorado right there. That wears me out just seeing that line again. It's called the triple bypass. You want to go higher? You want to take it to another level? Then you need somebody who can take you there. You need somebody who can get you there. Now here's the point. Listen to me. The book of Hebrews. You need, say it with me, a high priest. Come on, help me now. You need a what? High priest. Woo! If I'm going higher, I need me a... No, I don't need me no low priest. There's a bunch of them out there. I need me a what? Woo! That's what I need. And you're going to learn this today in the Scriptures, right from the book of Hebrews. Did you know in the Old Testament, high priest would go into the holy place once a year and would offer sacrifice for the people's sins? He had a fancy robe on. He had bells on it. It's all designed in the Bible. Ringy, 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 ringy. When he goes into that holy hole, ringy, 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 ringy. He also had a rope tied to him. Ringy, 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 ringy. And outside that rope, they're holding on to the rope. Because if the ringy, 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 ringy quit, pull the rope, that sucker's dead. And, uh, you know, it never could atone for the sins of the people. That's why Jesus came. Amen? And I tell you what, there's some serious bells going off when he was here. I'm telling you that right now. When he comes again, the trumpet's going to sound. It's going to be crazy, man. Insanity. He is our high priest. That's who he is. We don't have some guy in some fancy robe anymore with the ringy, 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 and me holding on to a rope hoping that sucker gets through. Amen? I have Jesus. He is my what? High priest. Priest, what's that got to do with prayer? I'm glad you asked. I want you to see what you have in Jesus. This is from the book of Hebrews. I just took some time off and laid it out for you this week. He's my high priest. He's the only one who can take me higher. Next somebody comes up, comes up to you and tells you, well, you know, I got this religion. I want you to ask him, is he your high priest? Say, I don't need your low priest, Okay? I need a high priest. There's only one high priest in all the Word of God that can do for you what you need done. That's Jesus. He is my high priest. I want you to see what He's done for you. Look at it. And we're talking about prayer. We're getting there. But you've got to know He's your high priest first. First of all, say it with me. He is what? Great! Look at the Scripture. 4.14 Seeing then we have a great high priest. He's passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We're rolling, Raj. He's not only great, He feels what I feel. Hebrews 4.15, we don't have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like me. Where are you going to find somebody like that to pray to? Say, somebody that's great, somebody that feels what you feel. Wow, prayer is my opportunity. It's crazy. Keep looking. This is the third thing I saw. Say that with me. My high priest, say that with me. He became... Where are you going to find somebody to do that for you? <laughs> wow, look at it. For such a high priest became us who's holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made what? Higher than the heavens. This is Jesus. He's our high priest. Wow. No wonder we ought to tell people about him. Amen? This is great. Keep looking. He has said with me, merciful and faithful. I mean, he ain't a high priest that's going to pop you upside the head. This is a high priest who is merciful to me. He's faithful. Where in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a what? merciful and faithful high priest. This is who we have. You want to go higher? Hook your wagon to him. Amen? Good stuff, man. Say that with me. He is a what? Priest for what? Hey, the bell's ringing. He ain't got no bell. He ain't got to worry about them bells. He ain't got to worry about no rope hooked to him. On the cross, he said, it is finished. Three days later, boom, out of the grave. He's alive forevermore. Now, you can believe it or you don't believe it. That's up to you. That's what the Bible teaches. He is our what? High priest. 
you got to get this in your noggin. That you're not bothering God. That you're not like, when you, when, you, when, you pr- when you don't pray, I hope you feel terrible after this message. You need to pray. You've got to pray. It's the right thing to do to pray. And look at this, you've got the high priest. Look at all these things he is. You and I would be a fool if we didn't pray. Come on. Man, is he ever for you? It's, it's insane. He is a priest what? Forever. And he said in another place, thou art a priest for ever. Jesus Christ. He's not going to let you down. He ain't going to show up a wall. Amen. Also in Hebrews 7.21 it says the same thing. You are a priest forever, Jesus. So we're just talking about our high priest. You want to go higher, you need a high priest. How about this one? He's what? Un changeable. Isn't that great that you can have somebody in your life who's God, who is not changing. As your world changes, as the mess comes and flies your way back and forth, up and down, thank God you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And nobody's changing your title either. You're high priest forever. But this man, because he continued ever, ever, hath an unchangeable what? Priesthood. That's our Savior. We're going somewhere. I love this verse, one of my favorite verses in all the Bible. Say that with me. He ever lives to make intercession. And you're going to bother Him. Isn't that funny? You ever known somebody, you had a loved one or friend, somebody you cared about, and you know they just love to do a certain thing? And it might be, it might be like my mama. She loved to cook. It was nothing. Boy, it just made her happy when I'd come home and, and I would say, boy, I'd love to have some of those chicken and dumplings. Or how about some of that fried zucchini, man, she could make, or fried uh, okra, or biscuits. She loved, to cook. she loved to do it. But if I went and said, hey, I ain't hungry, I don't want none, I ain't eating, I wouldn't get nothing. Here's Jesus he loves. I know that's a horrible example I'm making, but the point is, he loves. He loves. He loves. He lives. He lives for his children to come and say, Dear Jesus, it's all right. This is great. He ever lives to make intercession. Isn't that the greatest thing to say? But no, I can't pray. I ain't got time. I don't want to bother nobody. That is, that's just like not eating. That is dumb. Come on. Wherefore he's able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. We've got to do something. Come on. Woo! Thank you, Lord. So he's my high priest, but wait a minute. He appears, say it with me, right now in the presence of God for. I don't believe in your religion. I believe in this way. I believe in this. I don't know where your joker is, but I don't believe he's at the right hand of God. Excuse me. Amen? My Savior is at the right hand of God. My high priest. You can't get no higher than the right hand of God. For Christ not entered into the holy place made with, with hands which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself. He's now to appear in the presence of God for who? Us! But I don't want to pray. I'd be bothering him. Why is he even there then? Bother him. Amen? Put it on him. He loves it. He sits at the right hand of God. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest, wow, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Prayer is a great opportunity for you and for me. It can change our life. You've been dealing with some mess? Been trying to handle it on your own? You've been struggling for years with some kind of sin or addiction or something? Why don't you put it on Jesus? Why don't you talk to him about it? You got weakness in your life? You feel like I do on a Sunday? You come here and 
don't think you're worthy and can't preach and can't do and can't whatever, and you meet with five or six guys and you get out of the truck and feel like you can charge hell with a water pistol, that's what prayer can do for you. You listening? Wow, what an opportunity! He is our high priest of God, okay, over the things to come and our future. Hebrews 9.11, but Christ being come a high priest of good things to what? Come. You put your confidence in Him. Talk to Him about your needs. Talk to Him about your problems. Go to your high priest. Speak to Him. Pray in Jesus' name. You ever wonder why we pray in Jesus' name? Some places they don't want you to. You can pray, just don't pray in Jesus' name. Well, if you don't pray in Jesus' name, prayer ain't worth a dime. Who else is at the right hand of God the Father? I mean, I know that's strong, ugly preaching, but it ain't ugly preaching. It's the Bible. Amen? Have you ever wondered why we pray in Jesus' name? Are you getting an idea now why we pray in Jesus' name? Somebody tell me. Amen? Yes, I'm learning. Yeah. He's your high priest. He's the high priest over the house of God. Boy, that's good stuff right there. He's over us. we got a high priest over the house of God. Amen? We're not alone. If I face struggles with this building and stuff like that, let me tell you something. All i got to do is get my jaws jacked a couple of times by people that are prayer people, and all of a sudden I know, let me tell you something, this ain't Gary's building, this is God's building. All right? And so I tell you what, you might think it ain't going to happen, or you might be causing some issues here, but let me tell you something, it's going to happen. Okay? It's going to happen. I believe with all my heart. Why? Because I have a Jesus, the high priest, over the house of God. You know? Now, I forget that. I forget that, just like you forget when you get in mess. But you know, but the point is, that's who he is. Wow. And that helps me. I'm the preacher here, but I tell you what, Jesus is over the house of fellowship. Amen? Boy, that is a burden lifted off of Clarkster. I'll tell you that right now. Thank you, Lord. Prayer, our opportunity. So I just want to sort of prove to you from the book of Hebrews that you have a high priest. If you want to go higher, remember this. Don't take a low priest. Take a high priest. If you want to raise your level of your Christian life, you remember, if you're going to go higher, only one person going to get you there. His name's Jesus. High priest. So he's our example. The Word of God's our instruction. He's our high priest. 